Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this Wednesday, the 24th of January. Hey, not uh, much in the economic news today, but the stock market uh, futures looking good. We'll talk about that and more when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. Before we do, though, let's not forget that there are so many things in this world that you and I, we have no control over. However, you can take control of your investment portfolios. You need to know how much risk you have in that portfolio and you need to know how much risk you should have in that portfolio based on your current circumstances. That's why I created the core retirement design to walk through that process. 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. With that, we got Dave coming up next. Five point seven light FM morning. All I'm glad you're with me today. It's eight forty two now. Night 18 here before 9. Let's check in on money and see what Wall Street's doing here today. Yesterday was uh, on the strange side. There's a certain lesson to be had by that. Let's uh, do that lesson with the resources of Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services, who is on to line with us this morning. Philip, good morning. How you doing? Hey, good morning, David. Doing well today. Halfway through the week, so... Uh... Yeah, the market, uh, at least this morning, is looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking good this morning. Yesterday, we were setting the table. The Dow was off by 96 points, and I was thinking, oh, well, they just can't stand 38,000. But I'm kind of guessing that was on the strength of Boeing and 3M having really bad days yesterday. Remember, it's a price-weighted index, right? Yeah, that, that's right. And so that, uh, you know, it just takes two. It just takes one, really. We've seen it before. We're just one stock can put a lot of pressure on on the Dow. Absolutely, and that's what happened to them because everything else was off. The S&P set a new all-time record. NASDAQ is uh, the best they've been in three years. They were up $65.66. Might make mention, to the fact that NASDAQ being a price-weighted index, uh, the tech stocks are having a pretty doggone good time of it. So uh, the other two indexes were frittering around the quarter percent mark up and down. NASDAQ was up almost a full half a percent, and I'm just kind of betting a nickel that uh, – that uh, probably Netflix was probably the driving force on the NASDAQ yesterday, weren't they? Uh, definitely yesterday and today, Dave, when we talk about them in a little bit. We'll, we'll talk about <laughs> their, their nice little bump this morning. Absolutely. Yeah, the S&P is really what I know. It's one that you lean on, and it really is far and away the most meaningful blue chip index we got, because when you get to the tech stocks, both the NASDAQ and the, and the Dow indexes are price rated, which means one really good day can really mess up the numbers. Start the morning out with uh, economic reports, and I got some really good news out of the mortgage application number. The Mortgage Bankers Association sends out their mortgage application index on Wednesday mornings, and uh, we were up. 3.7 percent last week. That was after a 10, or this last week. That was after a 10 percent increase the week before. And I was digging a little deeper into the number. This is the really good news. You and I have been kind of cynical about these mortgage application index numbers, but the number of refinance applications down to only about a third of the mortgage application filed last week, and that. That's got to be considered good news for the housing industry because you and I have been kind of surmising, and it was the case for a while. A lot of it is tight money, cash out, refinances, but in this case, they're actually buying something with them as well. And that's good news. I mean, for the housing industry as a whole, I mean, to, to be able to, uh, you know, that means two thirds of those applications were for new homes. And so that's, yeah. uh, that's got to be some good news. Yeah, especially given the you know, given the housing information that we got last week, it was not a pleasant week for the housing industry. And seeing some good news after some bad news on existing home sales, new home constructions, building permits, and the rest is kind of good to see some good news. Talking about good news, if they're right, this would be really cool. You found a uh, Goldman Sachs release talking about how they think we might actually see four interest rate cuts this year. What what are they smoking up there? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but their uh, their headline was, uh, you know, they rate gurus at Goldman see four rate cuts in 2024, a great year for China and a weak dollar. So. Um, that's going to be interesting to see how uh, how that comes to fruition. Uh, it, it just kind of flies in the face of all the indications that we've had, and uh, kind of your lips to uh, Jay Paulson's ears next Tuesday, wouldn't you think? Uh, yeah, it'd be boy, it'd be a shocker if we got a rate cut already. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is of all the Federal Reserve meetings that we've tracked over the years, Philip. This is the one that's gotten the absolute least ramp up, least build up. Nobody said a doggone thing about it, and uh, if they do anything, because half the half the pundits that are out there haven't even mentioned we got a meeting. It'll be really earth shaking if they actually do anything next Tuesday and Wednesday. It, it, it will be, and um, you know, if they do something, either way. I think would send shockwaves. Absolutely. I, like I said, I've seen absolutely no press coverage about the darn thing. And normally for three weeks before every Fed meeting, you got every doggone thing on my news ticker saying Federal Reserve expected odds are blah, blah, woof, woof, for an increase or a decrease or whatnot. <laughs> it's almost like Wall Street didn't notice. And I mean, okay, we're just after Christmas. They're still working off the eggnog, but uh, that this is going to be an absolutely nothing meeting. And if it isn't a nothing meeting, we're, we're going to have an absolute seismograph <laughs> next Wednesday, I suspect. Yeah, that would be true. That would be true. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, talking about the companies that are reporting earnings, we mentioned Netflix, and uh, I didn't know what to expect from them. I'm not a Netflix user, but uh, evidently everybody and their brother is, right? Hey, they really had a good quarter. Um, they added 13.1 million new subscribers <laughs> during the fourth quarter. Um, they now have over 260, almost 261 million paid subscribers, um, and their revenue top forecast as well. Here's here's how it compares to what the expectations were. They earned two dollars and I miss they earned two dollars and twelve cents versus two eleven. They uh, they bought in eight point eight billion dollars of revenue versus eight point seven that was expected. And the big number is this. Um, membership they were expected to have 256 million they actually have almost 261 million so everything was looking good for um for netflix and they've uh they've got a nice little bump going this morning up 10.6 percent dave well that probably does help the nasdaq index a little bit don't it <laughs> yeah it, it does yeah, it doing, definitely does doing a little math in my head while you were fleshing it out 13.1 million new subscribers that's the equivalent of five percent of the entire population of the country all in one month yeah that's uh crud you know <laughs> No Big reaction, deal. but that. Yeah, that's a holy crud moment. They ought to be happy in the executive suite up there. <laughs> Any other good news that came out of the reports that we had today and yesterday? You know, we've got some mixed bags across the board. We've got eBay reported, and they did, uh, they are up this morning um, on an announcement that they're going to lay off 9% of their workforce, about 1,000 folks, um, to reduce their head count. Uh, but they, their earnings, I don't think, came out yet, but that was that was in their release. We had uh, on on the other side some some not so good news. Texas Instruments reported mm -hmm. um, revenue was uh, was below expectations uh, for that first quarter. Earnings per share also came in below expectations, so uh, they're trading down about three percent this morning. Dupont um, they got beat up pretty bad this morning on on theirs. They uh, the revenue was below expectations. Earnings uh, miss and the earnings expectations for the current quarter are a big, big letdown as far as uh, the analysts are concerned. They're down, getting close to 12%, 11.6% this morning. Whoa, that, yeah. that I'm sure isn't helping the Dow. I think DuPont's still a Dow component. And then you had AT&T. Uh -huh. AT&T, they missed earnings in the fourth, uh, in this last quarter. It, yeah, it's their fourth quarter. Um, and looking ahead, they forecast lower than expected earnings in 2024, falling well short of uh, expectations from analysts. Now, they did say that in uh, 2025, I don't know how you get all the way from here to there, but uh, they do expect earnings to grow in 2025, uh, looking way ahead. But uh, they're down uh -huh. three. 3.1% this morning. Where do you, which bodily orifice do you pull a 2025 projection out of? <laughs> Especially in high tech. I mean, who knows what we're going to be putting in, in, in our back pockets by 2025 these days, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I thought that did, was interesting. 
Did they happen to say what it was that cost them a world of hurt? Because I, I did see at least the top line that Verizon did well if their head-to-head competitors doing well. And they're stinking the place up. That kind of means that we're seeing a shift in business, doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't have any details. It's just kind of a summary of the of the report right there. Yeah, that, that kind of surprised me. I didn't see the AT&T report. I just saw the top line on Verizon, and I'm saying, whoa, wait a minute. How come they stink? Hmm. What else we got? That's it. That's, that's what we got for today. Well, that's plenty. <laughs> I, did, I did see a top line. You and I were cracking wise before we went on the air. I saw, I saw a top line that Kimberly Clark had a slight miss, and but their stock's still trading up, and my reaction to that is, well, Kimberly Clark is recession-resistant. Everybody needs toilet paper, and that was kind of our mantra when I was working up in Appleton, Wisconsin, right near the factory. Uh, resetting the table, it was a down day for the blue chip index yesterday, an up day for everybody else. 45 minutes before we actually trade things around with real money this morning, how are things looking? A lot of a lot of green ink this morning, Dave. Across the board, uh, the Dow is up four tenths of a percent right now. The S and P five hundred is up a little over a half a percent, and the Nasdaq one hundred up eight tenths. Big winner though is going to be the Russell two thousand, up uh, one and a third percent this morning. Before we get trading, on the other Ooh, side we got yeah big jump. Silver up two point three percent, almost to twenty three dollars again. Twenty two dollars and ninety eight cents. Uh, gold's up uh, a little over four tenths of a percent. Crude oil is trying to get to seventy five this morning, Dave. It's, it's up seven tenths of a percent to seventy four dollars and eighty nine cents a barrel right now. One of my commodities tip sheets was uh, saying that uh, the increase in oil prices was on some improved expectations in China. I gather they had some good news that I couldn't find what it was, but I gather there were some well, increased expectations there. But the one thing I did see about China in a headline, I didn't get a chance to dive down, was mm-hmm. that they they are expected to cut their um, their banking ratio of how much they have to have in reserves. To free up some cash. Okay, that was the good news that prompted the oil to go up because the market in China and basically all around the Asian rim was pretty big at 6 a.m. this morning. The Hong Kong market was up 3.5%. And I mean, that's earth shaking in any world. Uh, mainland Chinese markets were up by a percent to a percent and a half. The rest of the Asian rim was pretty much, eh, we're talking hundreds of a percent, no big change. So it was obviously good news to the Chinese business place. Europe is looking at our futures and saying, oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, overall, European index is up almost a full percent this morning, being led by Germany, who's having an absolute party up over a percent and a half halfway through their day. Somebody needs to get some uh, drill-down information how to make this uh, stuff we talk about every morning turn into a productive retirement. How do I find you to be able to make it work for me? They, they can join us and, and learn more about our core retirement design, where we'll help them design that retirement they always dreamed of. Then give us a call at 863 382 0037 to schedule their core retirement analysis and then join us this weekend for the statler financial radio show 6 a.m and noon on saturday 10 a.m sunday morning on highlands news talk 730 and 95.3 fm all righty and you'll be here tomorrow and i'll see you on friday fair enough fair enough buddy have a great golf game Thank you much, my friend, here on Light FM. That's uh, Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services. Do you actually... Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Hope your week's going well. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, and we will update you on what's happening around the financial world. Until then, have a great day.